Thank you. 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 Thank you.
highly educational individuals that touch hot surfaces just to see how hot it really is. <laughs> so today, when we are here to celebrate the Universal Children's Day, you have to ask yourself, are students getting the exposure that they really need? Or better yet, are students getting the exposure that you wish you had gotten when you were younger? Are we providing each and every student equal exposure to reach his or her potential? We the students do not think so, especially in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Indeed, students are taking higher and higher levels of science education, as you can see from the exponential growth of the number of students taking AP Biology. But science instruction is still heavily based on imparting a body of knowledge and applying this knowledge to a predefined problem. And although there are some great science organizations and competitions out there, more often than not, participation is often limited. In fact, we conducted a campus-wide randomized survey in one majority lower income and one majority upper income school and found that students are strongly discouraged by these very organizations and competitions created to inspire them in science. 65% of the students said that these competitions and programs are rewarding to only a small percentage of students. But believe it or not, many science clubs are actually exclusive as well. You actually have to take an exam to join. So students who want to explore the field of science are not allowed to do so. This explains why that when, that when students are upperclassmen, the child rate declines from 14% to 5%, and 80% lose interest altogether. Now this worries me, because our future demands STEM. Take a look at this infographic by Microsoft. 80% of the projected jobs in the next decade require technology skills. That's 1.2 million job openings in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It also states that there will be a significant shortage of the number of qualified students to fill these careers because only 16% of bachelor's degree will specialize in STEM in 2020. But the biggest consequence of the lack of exposure to the world of science is the inhibition of imagination. If you consider the screen to be everything and anything, then this circle is life as we know it. This as science as we know it. But this itty bitty circle, compared to this vast cosmos, is science that we are exposed to. So if students are only exposed to this small portion, how do we expect students to be interested in science? Or, how, or better yet, how do we encourage them to be imaginative and creative? What can we do? What should we do? My friend Aaron and I founded ImagiScience, a nonprofit student led organization that is aimed to inspire scientific curiosity and interest among our own peers through programs, challenges, and competitions designed by us, the students, because students know what students want. We're only two months old, two months, but it's, it's quite surprising how viral our initiative has become. Within a few weeks of Facebook campaigning, we have over 600 student followers, 300,000 post views, and it now serves as an active discussion board with fun challenges that appeal to students. Within three weeks, we have 10 local, chap 10 local Imagisize chapters that are spread all throughout California. One of our highlights was Science's Fill in the Blank, where we asked students and adults what science means to them and express it on paper or on their body. These pictures have over 3,000 Facebook impressions and it, now, and it opened the dialogue around science education, whether it was positive, negative, or really negative. <laughs> Our goal for this year is to establish an exposure program, a program that provides free private tours around companies, laboratories, and universities because simple exposure goes a long way. These are some of our targets for our next few quarters. Now I believe that the solution lies in us, the students, the kids. We need to empower the students who really understand one another. 
to take the lead in inspiring interest in science. Help us design programs, challenges, and competitions that really appeal to us. Support us by fueling our initiative because we need your guidance and years of experience to grow. Believe in us to take to be the to be the agent of change. Are you ready to believe? Because we are ready to make a change. Thank you. That was great. And he's only 16 years old. He said that his business has only been started for two months. So it was a dream, and now it's something that's grown so big. And that's something that we all can do. So just give it up for him one more time.